All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the video. So we have another one in the LTTB. I've been playing this tank so much, guys, and you know I do want to give you some different content. But like you, you guys know, I'm a very casual, you know, uh, YouTuber. We have now 73 subscribers, which is just incredible. Like I started at like 10 subscribers, thinking this was just going to be a collection of my own videos, and we actually got you know a little bit of a following, so it's really cool. But anyway, guys, um, I just play what I want to play, and if I have a good game or there's something in the game that um, you know I want to bring to you guys in a, from a strategic you know point of view, then I will do so. So. We're on Fisherman's Bay in the LTTB, guys, and what I start doing now on this map is, look, I've seen a lot of people, um, the camera's a little messed up, but I've seen a lot of people go over to these bushes over here, and I've talked about this before, guys, in previous videos. I think it's very, very risky to go out here. I've seen it work, and in fact, a game I played in the LT432 yesterday... Uh, I haven't had a 0-0 zero, zero game in months, guys. Months. I mean, like, this rarely happens to me. I was in the LT432 on the other side, and there was a Batchat 12T that pulled into this bush. He lit me, and I think he had um, the radio equipment. So I pulled back up again after maybe 11 or 12 seconds, and I got lit up again, and I died with zero damage and zero spotting damage. And you can imagine how angry I was, but... It can work, is what I'm saying. The problem is, if you get spotted there, like, at least I can pull down from where I was. I can always go this way. I can just pull down there because there's a little, like, dip here. And you could actually stay safe from the TDs that are all firing from here. But if you get lit over here, you're in big trouble because you have to run this way. And then when you run this way, you're running into people that are in the mid. And um, if you run this way, then obviously you have to come up this little hill, which slows you down a little bit, and the TDs have a clear shot at you. And then you got to make sure you're not running into one of your teammates and stuff. So I just find this bush to be kind of a middle ground. Um, it's not nearly as risky. You're, I would say 90-something percent of the time you pull up to this bush, you're not going to get lit unless someone is like already right here with binox and cvs or something like that but i believe this batchat 12t that outspotted me had like it had to have been like the radio equipment or some one other td back here had like binox and radio equipment or something like that and he had like cvs i was just terribly outspotted guys and that is rare i'm usually <laughs> i'm usually the best light tank in the game right because I said, all i play is light tanks guys there's people that are a lot better than me in other vehicles but i'm very good in light tanks so that was that really you know, tick me off. But it is what it is, guys. Sometimes you get outplayed and, you know, you just have to move on. You have to, you know, keep your cool and get out of the battle and get into the next game. Um, you know, it happens. It's it's World of Tanks. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's just a video game, right? As they all say. Um, so it happens. We're spotting the Char Fooder here, or however you pronounce this tank. And um, this is why I think this is a good bush, guys. Like, I have Binox, right? And we spot the FV4005. The FV has no concealment whatsoever, you know, obviously. So to spot him right at the end edge of the view range here was pretty was pretty cool. But like I said, when you have Binox, I mean, this guy, if, when he fires, his concealment is basically zero, even if he's behind a bush. At least that's how I understand it. So we're spotting a couple people here, guys. And AMX50B has pushed, which makes our job easier, right? Like... If people YOLO this way, then obviously you have to run away. So a lot of, you know, kind of strategic talk at the beginning here, guys. But um, you can see their LT-432 has got, got lit here. And he's staying safe right here, like I was talking about before. But yeah, guys, I mean, I, I would say, I think the, the issue that I, that I had is when I ran, ran to this bush, I went through here, tried to get to this little line of bushes and i think the view range from the bat chat went through like here the roadway or something like that and lit me so that's another um comment about this bush line i would recommend you kind of come up to it and get into the far bush line first and then kind of like back in and wiggle yourself in and then pull back quick make sure you're not lit and then go back again that's what i do you kind of have to play around with it but yeah i was just really cocky pulled into that bush and i got whacked so um, we're spotting, you know, s still like the, the TNH over here and stuff like that. They're going dark, but, you know, I think we do light them up a couple more times. I know we light the FV4005 up, um, a couple more times. And, um, yeah, guys, I mean, Fisherman's Bay is kind of a boring map. You know, you could see, like, if you're, especially if you're going to play the west side, which you should as a light tank, or you play the mid, 
you know, it's this is not a map where you can really like you could press up to here this rock, but once you get there, it's like then you have to run right into the TDs. It's one of those maps where you got to be very careful about you know when you press and kind of how you do it and stuff, um, as opposed to some other maps that might have a lot more hard cover. But you know, there there are a lot of maps like this um, where you just have to really play it safe. And what I'm going to do here now is I actually learned this from Lemming Rush, um, the guy who's. He's probably around my age, maybe a little younger. I'm sure you guys ha have watched him. He has like 70,000 subscribers. He stopped making videos, but I used to learn so much from that guy. Um, I watched him before I watched Skill for LTU, and he actually, years ago, um, made this play. You knock down this tree, and you pull up into this bush here. And I do it from the other side, but you could do it from this side by knocking the tree down. So you knock the tree down, you pull up like this, and now we're spotting the Yag Tiger guys all the way in the back, I think. Um, and we're spotting the Conj here. And, you know, this is this is effective. Like, it's kind of a way to progress. How I like to call progressively scouting. Um, where you continuously move up into better bushes and better areas to spot. Um, you know, I, I went over this on the map Berlin. I talked about progressive scouting. Um, and it's something you have to do and have to have a, you, you, you have to know kind of how to do it guys and when to do it and have a good sense of what, what's going on on the map and stuff. And if you're looking at the map, speaking of the map, this whole side has been left open guys. You know, it's wide open. You can see that people are going to start coming this way. So I actually say in the chat, watch, watch the East and watch the South because I can't watch that for you guys. So get, get over there with some Binox or something. If someone has Binox and watch it because I, I can't, you know, I can't help you guys. So I get into this bush guys. I'm trying to get a little higher safely, you know, because the higher you can get, the better your view range is. Obviously, you know, in real life, if you're looking down on something, you have even much better view. And that's the case. Um, and the reason why I'm spamming the map guys, by the way, is because someone kept clicking on me and clicking over here and just, just spam clicking. Like, you know, I don't know if they said to go spot, but um, they're clicking on me and then clicking over, clicking on me, clicking over. So I drew a huge freaking circle, like a bunch of times, if they have XVM around all my TDs and all my support, which is right here. So why am I going to go out any further when all my support is right here, guys? You know, this is why this is why I tell you guys, just look at the map and understand where your support is in relation to, you know, the enemies and stuff like that. So we're still spotting here, guys. I don't know if we got the spotting damage there. I think the 50P got it, um, but we do spot the STRV and it must have been the YAG that hit him. Yeah, 1,050. And we're at 4,500 spotting damage, guys. And um, spoiler alert, we do zero damage in this game, guys. So, and you'll see that by the title, maybe. Um, but it's like over 9,000 spotting that we do. And, um, you know, I, I just find it... I, I got to a point at the end of the game, guys, where I didn't even want to shoot my gun. Because I want to make a point in, you know, basically saying that XVM and the um, W and 8, you know thing is totally broken when you can do 9,000 spotting damage and the W and 8 is probably like in the hundreds somewhere you know what I mean um, and it's just funny to me that that's the case and that some people think I like you know farm my W and 8 which is not the case at all you know I, I play to win guys and I could care less about my damage as long as my spotting damage is pretty high like my overall score is what I play for not my damage so we're spotting the T69, it looks like, here, and I'm going to start running away because what I want to do, guys, is the whole mid, right? If you're looking at the map, the whole mid is wide open, so where can I position myself to be able to spot both the mid, maybe even some people over here and here? Well, it would be in this bush line here. And you got to be careful because, look, the, the two, 277 or whatever was over there was really close. So luckily he died, and I kind of realized that. And I'm like, all right, I definitely can move up now. So I move into this bush, guys. I'm not lit. And now from here, we can spot the cons that's pushing in. And I think we still have some view on these guys. But the AMX-50B obviously has them lit. But, you know, the positioning is what's most important. I'm going to pause because the camera's getting a little wacky. And we can spot from here the STRV. We can spot the guard. We can spot the YAG, the T69. And we can even spot through like here, I believe, because um, I don't think I'm close enough to this bush or far enough away where it's going to be solid. You can see right through here and even here if they got up that close, but the 430 is over here. So you're, what I'm saying, guys, is your, your view range is everywhere in the, in this bush so this is basically like my final stand and if we can't pull it back from here then i'm going to run away and you know probably over to like here or something um even though there's a heavy i'll probably just 
duke it out with the heavy and run away and try and do some damage. Because sometimes it gets to a point, guys, where as a light tank, you have to start doing damage in order for your team to, to pull it back. And um, luckily that wasn't the case in this game. I'll spoil it for you guys. You'll see. But, um, you know, there's a lot of times where you'll hear me say, like, okay, I really got to start getting involved and dishing out some damage because if I don't, we're going to lose. Um, and that becomes difficult because then you have to get solid bush, you know, you can't spot as well when you're shooting, right? Because you have to keep going solid bush and stuff like that. And it becomes difficult, guys. So Rhino is pushing. Obviously, we didn't spot him. as He's really far through the bushes. But we do have, you know, vision on the Yag. We have vision on the T-69. Uh, we have vision on the guard. And this is what's most important, guys. We're just trying to give our team as much vision as possible. And you can see the HP differential. We have more than two times the HP. We could pull this off f fairly easily as long as we have the advantage from spotting. Like, we're at 7,500, guys. And um, I'm going to give you some silence from here because I don't think I've stopped talking, like, since this video started. So, let's just sit back and watch for a little bit. So, 430 pressed. Um, the Rhino. Guard goes down. And we're lit here. So... As you can see, guys, we pulled this game back very quickly. I take a shot from the STRV. It's not changing anything at all. I will drop the camera and show you guys my HP. But, um, you know, it's not changing anything here at all. Um, you know, we still have quite a bit of HP. And now I'm going to go after this guy. So getting more spotting damage, guys. We're at 9,000 now. SDRV goes down. And now we're going to go after the TNH. This new... What, whatever this tank is. It's like Polish or... I don't, I don't know, guys. I don't keep up with these new tanks. Anyway, he goes down, guys. We don't get the, the last spotting damage on him. But that's it, guys. 9,226 spotting damage. Six spots. Zero freaking damage zero damage guys so that's this game i'm gonna blow up the camera get into the end plates guys and um yeah i mean uh, we talked a lot through this video guys i'm like running out of breath but i love doing these videos just to show you guys everything that i know everything that i've learned to to you know it makes it fun because it, it's almost it feels like i'm teaching someone you know just what i know and um you know I, I just really enjoy doing that guys so if you if you're looking for a way to scout this map um in a situation that's similar to this this is how i do it now come to this bush don't even try to go over here guys i mean you could try if you have a lot of concealment but i'm telling you i get lit there all the time and it just ruins my game i get whacked and I don't like it. So I come up to this bush, guys. I think it's a little bit better. I think maybe that's even what Wargaming expects you to do. The only problem is if someone rushes here, then you have to get out of here. So that's it, guys. Um, let's get into the end plates now. Um, I believe there was no blind spotting damage. I think it was, yeah, exactly 9,226. Again, we did zero damage, guys. Zero damage. And um, by XVM standards, in terms of WN8, this is probably like a few hundred, you know, because WN8 does not take into account spotting damage. Um, so when it comes to something like this, you really want to look at World of Tanks rating. And guys, um, World of Tanks rating wise, this is very high. So we have the Scout badge, guys. And, um, you know, other than that, that's pretty much it. Zero damage again, 921 experience, the one badge, and STRV had a phenomenal game. Yagpanzer had a pretty good game. Um, they do a lot of damage, so I don't really <laughs> always look at the damage there. But um, this is where, like like all these guys right here, these top guys that stayed alive, is what won us the game, guys. I mean, what is this? 5,000? That's like 10,500. Um, I, I got to say, this is like, this has got to be what, like 14,000 damage just from these guys alone. This guy did pretty well as well. 
he stayed alive he's down here um and yeah guys i mean look we did a lot here the amx 50b did a good job too everyone did a pretty good job i mean like uh, this guy might have died early but like overall this team was good guys and that's what made the difference is everyone paid attention they saw kind of i guess where i was spotting and they they took their shots carefully and tried to stay you know at least somewhat safe they didn't take as much uh as much damage maybe as some tds do when they're just you know aimlessly pulling into a bush and shooting and not really worrying about getting spotted or whatever the case may be guys but these guys played it very well they all did a good job and we were able to bring this game back and um you know really it was just as much you know on me as it was on them if that makes sense like sometimes i feel like i carry a game but i feel like these guys like i think it was all a team effort in this in this case guys and um yeah i mean it was it was a fun game for sure guys so we made 24k because we didn't even shoot any um you know any rounds and we also only took one shot so the you know re the repair vehicle wasn't that much so we actually made 24k from this battle which is rare when you're making you know with uh, consumables you're making coin you know that's not uh, a premium tank right so that's about it guys 10 minute battle again 9226 assist nothing here at all and um by xvm standards you know it's just hilarious guys that people you know care so much about w and eight um i'll i'll admit i i like looking at my w and eight rating but that's not what's important to me um you know i always play to win and i also play to enjoy the game guys so i hope you enjoyed the video that's it guys i'll catch you for the next one so stay safe take care and bye bye